What's going on everyone? It's Brace from Langchain, and in this video we're going to be reintroducing Langgraph.js, including all the new additions and improvements we've made to the API. Next we're going to be covering Langgraph Studio, which is what you're looking at here. This is an application we built for debugging, iterating, and developing your Langgraph applications. And then finally, at the end of the video, we're going to be covering deploying your application to the cloud using Langgraph Cloud, which is our hosted platform where you can quickly and easily deploy your Langgraph applications to be used in production. So to start, we're going to look at Langgraph Studio, which is what you see right here. I've loaded in a simple graph, which has two nodes, agent and tools. Um, as we can see, it starts and will always get routed to the agent node. This agent node can then route to either the tools or it can end. If it selects the tools node, it will then invoke that, and this will always get passed back to the agent. We can see that's represented by the solid arrow, um, and then agent can also can, can conditionally route to tools or end, so it can route back to the agent, and then it can end. Uh, what is a node? A node is essentially a function which we've added to our graph. This function gets will always be passed the state of our graph. So we can see here, we've defined our state as just a list of messages. Each node will always accept the state, and then it will, re will return either one field or all the state fields, which will then get updated or appended to the state, depending on how you've implemented your state annotation, which we'll cover in a second when we inspect the code. So to start, let's add a simple query saying who won the US Open in 2023. Uh, when we submit this, it will get passed to our agent node, which is an LLM that has a tool bound to it. This tool is the Tavili Search API Results tool. Um, and then it can use the query we submitted to search the web for who won the US Open. Um, after it searches the web using the tools node, that'll get routed back to the agent. And then the agent will be able to generate a final answer and finish it here. Uh, when I invoke it, we'll be able to see on the right all the different messages streaming in from our graph as they're being executed in real time. So we can see it'll stream in the input I submitted, the result from the agent, which should be a tool call, the result of the tool call, which should be the results from the Tavili Search API, and then finally a final generation from our agent. So let's add that input and then execute the graph and see it run. So when I hit submit, we can see it streamed in the input, then our tool call from the AI message, finally the results of the tool, and then at the bottom, our final generation. Now let's go back to the top and cover this in detail. So we see we have our input, which is from the start node. When I hover over it in the studio, you can see it highlights it on the UI on the left. That was then passed to our LLM, which called the Tavili search results JSON tool. Since we called the tool, it got routed to the tools node, which invoked the Tavili search results API. As you can see, we got a few different fields back from this, including the winner, um, which is what we've requested. Finally, the results of this tool got passed back to the agent, where it generated a plain text response, and because it was a plain text response, it got routed to the end. Now, we can go in and look at the code and see exactly how and why our graph took this path, um, and exactly how we would build this. First, if you'd like to follow along, you should clone the Langgraph.js examples repository. I'm going to add a link to it in the description, and then you're going to navigate into the intro directory. Once you're there, you're going to want to open up the index.ts file inside the intro directory, and then you can see our simple graph we've defined. Uh, at the top, you can see we have an LLM, Chat Open AI. We've also imported our Tavili search results tool and defined the web search tool here. In order to run this graph, you're going to want to populate the in.example file I've added here, including your Tavili API key and OpenAI API key. If you're running this graph programmatically or not in the studio or cloud, you should also add your Langchain API key for Langspec tracing. If you're running it in the studio or the cloud, you do not need to add that because they're automatically injected for you. Now, if we go back to the graph, we can see we defined our tools here. We defined our tool node, which is a special pre-built class from Langgraph, which accepts a list of tools. And then we add it as a node in our graph. And when that node is invoked and it's passed a tool call from an LLM, it's able to map that to the tools which we inputted and then invoke the function on those tools. So once we defined our tools, we can see we defined our call model function here, and it takes in an argument of state, which is the type of messages annotation. Uh, what is messages annotation? This is a pre-built state I've imported from Langgraph, um, and essentially what it is is the way you define state in your graph and how that state should be mapped and populated when it's returned and updated. So if we scroll to the bottom, we can see I've commented it out since I'm using the imported version, but if I were to define this programmatically, I would say const message annotation equals annotation.root. You'll import annotation from Langgraph, and then annotation.root accepts an object, 
And in this object, you'll define the different fields in your state. So for us, we just want to have the messages field. So I will only define one key messages. And the result of this, or the value of this, is another annotation function, passing in a generic so that our graph has the proper types throughout it. And then inside of this annotation function, I define a reducer and a default. This reducer is a factory function that's called every time I update or append to my state. So in this case, it's a pre-built function, which you can also import from LangGraph, which takes in two uh, arguments, the current state and the update value. Then it essentially just concatenates those with a little extra logic around removing or appending messages. Um, then I've also added a default function. In this example, I added a default system message. However, that is not required. Your default um, factory can return any type of array that matches the type you defined up here. So we can see I passed that message annotation to my state graph, and then I define my nodes. Uh, I only have two nodes defined here, the call model and the tool node node. And if we go back to the studio, you can see that matches up here with these two nodes I've defined. We define our edges, which are how the node gets mapped. So we want to always start and then invoke the agent node. Once the tools node is invoked, that should always map back to the agent. And then for the agent, we def define a conditional edge for this. Um, and if we inspect the conditional edge should continue function, you can see it also takes in the state. It extracts the messages and then the most recent message from that list. And it says if this is not an AI message or if it is an AI message and does not have tool calls, we want to end. If it does have tool calls, we want to map to the tools node. As the third argument in the conditional edge function, you can see we define the fields which our conditional node can map to. So it's either the tools node or this is a special uh, variable from LangGraph we've imported. And when this node is passed to our graph, it will automatically end. Finally, we compile our graph and export a function graph here. If you are not running this in the studio or the cloud, as this comment says, you want to un uncomment this line here, defining your check pointer. A check pointer is essentially a database which can store and persist the state and your threads uh, in your graph so that you can do things like interrupt the graph and exit them in order to perform some sort of, say, human loop operation or update the state. And then you can continue on from where you left off. And since you have this check pointer database passed to your graph, it'll be able to use the state from where it left off. If you're using it in the Studio of the Cloud, you do not need to define this because we will automatically inject one for you so that we can persist your threads. Finally, you see I'm exporting this variable. And that's so I can define it in my LangGraph.json file, which is the configuration file I need to define for using the Studio or the Cloud. Here I can define things like my node version, I can customize my Docker file, and I also define all my graphs. So in this case, I only have one graph, simple agent, and I pass in a path to the file which that graph lives in, and then the name of the variable of which that compiled graph is found. This is how LangGraph Studio and the cloud is able to find the graphs and invoke them inside my code base. Um, for running it in the studio, locally, I also define exactly how, where and how I can find my environment variable file. And that's so when I run it in the studio application, it's able to find my secrets and call the APIs that require secrets. Next, let's go and deploy this to production using LangGraph Cloud. And then we can run the studio in the production version. So to deploy your graph to production using LangGraph Cloud, you're going to want to navigate to LangSmith and then to the deployments tab inside of LangSmith. Here, you're going to click on New Deployment. And if you have not already done this, you want to link your GitHub account so that you can import a repository. In my case, I've already done it. So then I can select the langgraph.js examples repository. Next, I give it a name. I'll just name it intro. And I want to pass in the path to the langgraph config file if it's not in the root, uh, which in our case, it's not. So it's inside intro slash langgraph.json. Next, I can define a git branch, in my case, main, I don't need to define a different branch. And then I can define a deployment type, either development or production. In our case, we want development. And finally, you can add in your environment variables. I'm not going to add those in here, but that's what you would do if you're going to deploy it to cloud. Lastly, it's going to automatically create a tracing project for you. And then every single run and event that occurs inside this production deployment will automatically get logged to this project and not any of the other projects. You'll hit submit and then it will load up your new deployment. So I've already deployed this. So I'm going to look at my current deployment and then we can click LangGraph Studio here. And this is going to open up the studio, which looks just the same as our local version. However, this is using the actual production 
API. So we can once again ask it who is the US Open winner, and then it should be able to search that up the exact same way it did locally. So I add a new message. I say who won the US Open in 2023. When I hit submit, we're going to see everything stream in on the right like we did in the local version. So submit, we see our input, our tool call was called, the results of our tool call were passed back to the agent, and finally, we got the same result that we did when we were running it locally. Now you should be familiar with how to develop and iterate on your graph using the APIs we saw in the code earlier, as well as LangGraph Studio for local development. And what we just saw here, you should be familiar with how to deploy your graph to cloud using the LangGraph cloud, and then hit the API using the LangGraph Studio, uh, calling the production deployment. In the upcoming videos, we're going to cover some concepts like human in the loop. Uh, the next video is going to be an intro and high level overview as to what is human in the loop and how LangGraph can solve that as well as we're going to build some somewhat more advanced applications, including a stockbroker agent, which can purchase shares, uh, granted the human provides permission, as well as some applications showing all the different ways you can stream messages and events back from your production graph. I'll see you guys in those videos.